Did you know that islands are actually volcanoes that took millions of years to form? A lot of heat, time, and incredibly high temperatures are just some of the things needed to form an island. But do you know exactly how they're created? Today, we're going to discover this incredible natural process that has given us treasures like the amazing island of Hawaii or the Galapagos Islands. But before we dive in, please consider giving this video a like. It helps to make videos like this possible. Let's get started. First, we need to understand that an undersea volcano begins its life in the depths of the ocean, where the pressure is so intense that even hot magma has trouble rising. These volcanoes form when tectonic plates, massive blocks of the Earth's crust floating on the mantle, begin to separate or collide. As these plates move, they create cracks in the ocean floor, through which magma, a mixture of molten rock and gases, can escape. The process is slow but steady. The magma cools rapidly when it comes into contact with water and solidifies into a new layer of rock that begins to accumulate over time, forming a platform. For a submarine volcano to start growing and eventually become an island, an impressive amount of lava is required. This magma doesn't erupt all at once, but in intermittent eruptions over thousands or even millions of years. The lava builds up layer by layer, slowly forming an underwater mountain that could be several kilometers high before it even reaches the surface. Interestingly, these underwater mountains are often taller than any mountain on land before their peaks even see the light of day. The movement of tectonic plates is fundamental to this process. Not only do they create the cracks through which magma can rise, but they can also move the entire undersea mountain as they shift. This means that a submarine volcano could be born in one place, but end up as an island in another, after being slowly dragged along by the movement of the plates. This process, known as tectonic drift, explains the formation of island chains, such as those in Hawaii, where each island represents a different point of volcanic activity over time. To better understand the scale of these submarine volcanoes, we can compare them to well-known structures. Imagine that the volcano is two miles below the surface of the ocean, which is about two miles deep. That's almost three times the height of the Empire State Building, or more than twice the height of the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building. As a submarine volcano approaches the ocean's surface, its behavior changes dramatically. In the deep ocean, where water pressure is immense, eruptions are slower and more controlled. However, when the volcano reaches about 200 meters below the surface, the pressure drops dramatically and the eruptions become much more explosive. At this point, each eruption can release up to one and a half million tons of magma in a single event, enough to fill 600 Olympic-sized swimming pools. This increase in the intensity of the explosions also turns the surrounding water into a yellowish-green color due to the release of sulfuric gases, creating a hostile environment for marine life. Can you imagine the smell? Yeah, it's very toxic. When erupting magma comes into contact with cold ocean water, a phenomenon known as hydrovolcanism occurs. The temperature difference between the magma, which can exceed 1,200 degrees Celsius, and the water, which is about 4 degrees at these depths, triggers violent explosions. These explosions produce large amounts of steam, which in turn ejects fragments of volcanic rock and ash into the water, creating a dense and murky cloud. This process not only affects visibility in the marine environment, but can also harm many aquatic species due to sudden changes in water temperature and acidity. In addition, these eruptions can create shock waves that travel through the water, affecting areas miles away from the eruption site. When the volcano finally breaks through the ocean surface, the process of creating a new island begins. This is a crucial moment, as the lava, cooled by contact with the air, begins to solidify and accumulate, creating new land. But the process is not without its challenges. The young island faces a constant barrage of waves that can erode its newly formed structure. In many cases, the island may be submerged several times before a sufficiently solid base is established. A real-life example is Surtsey Island, which formed off the coast of Iceland in 1963. In its early days, Surtsey was battered by violent storms that eroded much of its structure, but eventually the island managed to survive, and today it remains a natural laboratory for the study of ecological colonization. The story of Surtsey shows how an island can survive the challenges of the ocean and become a permanent feature of the landscape. When a new island emerges from the ocean, it immediately faces its first and most relentless enemy. 
The sea, waves, driven by wind and tide, relentlessly attack the base and top of the newly formed island, eroding its structure. Waves, which can reach heights of up to 30 meters during heavy storms, pound the island with a force that can exceed 6,000 pounds per square foot. This constant bombardment of salt water and kinetic energy wears away the volcanic rock, causing large portions of the island to collapse back into the ocean. History has shown that many young islands are literally swept away by the waves before they can become permanently established. However, not all islands meet this fate. The survival of an island depends on several key factors. The composition of the volcanic material is crucial. Lava that cools quickly and becomes dense rock is much more resistant to erosion than more porous and fragile materials. The topography of the island is also important. An island with gentle slopes is less likely to crumble under wave pressure than one with steep walls and cliffs. Finally, ongoing volcanic activity can help an island resist the onslaught of the sea, as new eruptions can add material and strengthen the island's structure. There's examples of both destroyed and surviving islands. One of the most famous islands to collapse was Anak Krakatoa in Indonesia, which partially collapsed in 2018 due to a combination of volcanic eruptions and powerful waves, causing a devastating tsunami. On the other hand, islands like Hawaii have stood the test of time for millions of years, thanks in part to ongoing volcanic activity that strengthens their structure and protects them from ocean erosion. These cases remind us that nature is very unpredictable, and that an island's survival depends on a complex mix of factors. Once an island survives the initial battle against the sea, the fascinating process of colonization begins. The first inhabitants are usually bacteria and algae that cling to volcanic rock, starting a biological cycle that eventually leads to greater biodiversity. Then, seeds carried by the wind or birds begin to sprout, giving rise to the first plants. As the vegetation becomes established, animals such as insects and birds arrive, creating a new ecosystem. The initially barren and desolate volcanic landscape begins to transform into a thriving habitat full of life. However, human impact also plays a significant role in the evolution of these new islands. In some cases, humans have intervened to preserve these fragile ecosystems, such as Surtsey in Iceland, which has been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In other cases, the exploitation of natural resources has significantly altered the landscape and biodiversity. Human influence can either accelerate or inhibit the natural development of these islands, highlighting the importance of conservation and sustainable management. The future of newly formed islands is heavily influenced by climate change. As the planet warms, sea levels rise, which could threaten fledgling islands. Larger waves and more intense storms can erode and wear away these islands before they have a chance to stabilize. Imagine land that's just beginning to emerge from the water facing a sea that is hitting with much greater force. Islands that are just beginning to form may be the first to disappear if they can't adapt to these new challenges. For a newly formed island to become a permanent part of the map, certain conditions have to be met. First, it must have a solid lava base that won't wear away easily. It's also beneficial for the island to have a shape that helps protect it from waves and storms. Vegetation also plays an important role, as plants can help stabilize the soil and prevent erosion. In addition, human intervention can make a difference. Efforts to protect and preserve islands can help ensure their longevity. In the future, certain regions of the world may see the formation of new islands due to volcanic activity. Areas like the Pacific Ring of Fire, for example, which includes volcanic zones in Indonesia and Japan, are places where new islands could form. There's also potential in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. These regions are like pressure cookers that could eventually release new land into the sea. Can you imagine a brand new, unknown island rising to the surface soon? What do you think it would look like? Let us know in the comments. See you in the next video.